Today I got an HP laptop, re relatively low-end laptop, but it has a bad hard drive. I'm going to replace the hard drive with a new 2.5 inch SATA SSD. I'm going to open it up and show you how to do that. Let's get started. Hey guys, Dale here. How's it going? Today I have a HP laptop. Not a very high-end laptop, but it has a bad hard drive. Uh, I've already confirmed that the hard drive is bad. Fortunately, there's not a lot of important data, but there's a little bit of data on it. I, will be able, I should be able to save the data for the customer, but I'm going to replace the hard drive with a brand new Crucial 2.5-inch MX500 series solid-state drive. I'm going to, re, you know, in the place of the regular hard drive. doesn't have an M2 slot in, in this model. The exact model is a... HP 15-BN070WM. Alright guys, so that's the model. Sorry about that little interruption there. Been busy here this morning as always. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open it up to put in the new drive and do a clean install of Windows 10. Now on this particular model, all the screws are the same length so you don't need to worry about that. I, didn't, I took out all these screws out here, but I wanted to show you how to take these screws out in the back here. So we're going to, of course, remove the battery. We have to unlock it here and slip the battery out of the way. And there's two screws under the battery that we have to remove. Get my Thule in there. Pretty straightforward. These screws, again, are all the same length. So, these two little rubber feet here, we have to remove those, they're self-adhesive, so you need a really thin little tool just to get underneath the edge here to kind of peel it up. Just like that. And there's a screw underneath each one of these. Oops. And I'm using a number zero, zero Phillips screwdriver with a good magnetic tip. Makes the job a little simpler, easier. I don't normally remove screws on camera, guys. I just want to show you these ones here because they're kind, kind of hidden. There's nothing underneath this. So I'm going to go ahead. I've already taken out this screw here, obviously, for the optical drive. So let's get that out of the way. It just slides right out. Pretty straightforward. So now I'm going to flip it back over. I'm going to use one of my little spudger tools, and I'll have a link down below where you can buy these on Amazon. They're super cheap, but they're very, very handy for numerous things. There's a seam along the top edge here where the bottom pan meets the top palm rest and keyboard area. So we're just going to slip it in. I'm going to start right here, just kind of gently work it around, keeping it underneath if you can. You can hear it snapping. That's good. Just don't be ripping it off really quick. Sometimes along the back here, it's a little stubborn. I'll show you how to deal with that in a second. Just get it broke loose. Now over here where the CD-ROM drive, the optical drive goes in, be careful because you don't want to break it like that. So now that I got it started, I'm going to close the lid and flip it back around. All right, you can see it started here, but you don't want to be tugging too hard. Okay, actually this one's coming off along the back here. There's three or four little clips here. You can see these ones came off pretty easy, but sometimes you have to get a little plastic tool in here to kind of persuade it a little bit without breaking it. There, that comes right off. So guys, this isn't a high-end laptop by any means, but with a new solid state drive in there, it should run, run a lot better. There's only one slot for RAM currently has four gigs they want to they don't want to mess with that and here's a hard drive we're going to take out of here so I got I believe three screws to hold this caddy and there's a screw here screw here and a screw right over here so again I'm going to use my tool the batteries oop, the batteries out but still be careful 
I know my hand gets in the way, guys, but I'm a righty, so I can't really help it. <laughs> so these screws are all the same. Get them, get them out of the way. There's one more. Those three screws hold in the hard drive caddy that the hard drive's in, so we're gonna kind of jiggle it out. Now you can see how it's connected to the motherboard right here. Um, it's pretty easy just to, whoops, flip this little lever up right here, just like that, and we can pull that cable right out of there. So you get the drive, so it comes right out. So now we can unplug the connector from the hard drive, and we'll put that back in a second. So I have to get these little, let me get my new drive ready to go here. Get that out of the way. So we're gonna put the little caddy brackets back on the same way, obviously. So I'm gonna use my cordless screwdriver, not a drill. This goes a little quicker. You only got two hands. Pop these screws out. And we're just going to set that over there, put it back on the same way. You don't have to put them on too tight. Just like that. We're going to do the same thing on this side. that over there. Oop. Got to get it lined back up right. Flip it around. <clears throat> Done with that old clunky thing. I replaced more bad hard drives in this business pretty much than anything else. A lot of broken screens. Spilt my coffee on my keyboard. All kinds of fun stuff. Broke my charging port. All right, so as with any job like this, guys, before you dive into it, make sure you're always protected against static electricity. All my bench tops, my floors, and my shop are all anti-static, so I don't need to worry about it. But again, get a static wristband or a, a pad, an anti-static pad to work on if you have to, but just be always conscious of static electricity. So we're going to put our little SATA connector back on the drive, just like that. And we're going to attach it back underneath here. Let me get it up closer here so I can get this back in place for you. Just got to make sure that when you flip this down, that little black line right there, you got to make sure it's in all the way. When you push this down, it lines right up to the edge of the clip there. Pretty straightforward, but if you don't get it in all the way and you turn it on, you're just not going to see your, your new drive. All right, so let's put our screws back in. Again, this isn't a real fast laptop, but the SATA drive is going to help a lot. The SATA SSD. And one more screw. All right, everything's connected good. We look good. Now you can see it's pretty basic over here, but again, there's no M2 slot on this motherboard, so we didn't have a choice going with the SATA SSD. So let's put our bottom pan back in place. And I, mean, I always wait to put the screws back in until after I get my windows installed, just to make sure I don't, in case I have to open it back up for whatever reason. So just gently work your way around, clip everything back in place. Looks good. Make sure all your ports are in place. Just don't squeeze too hard. If you squeeze really hard, you could actually damage your screen through the lid here, so always be conscious of that. So I am gonna put these screws in the back here, back in, because I'm gonna put my battery in. Goes a little quicker. Not too tight. Just so we don't have screws coming out. And 
All right, two more. Near the hinge here. Just like that. You don't want to over tighten them because you can break stuff in there. Just like that. Put our little, if the sticky isn't sticking enough, you could have put a little couple, couple little specks of glue on there to hold that on, but these pretty much only go on one way. Just like that. Slide our battery back in place. Lock it in. All right, oop, let's go ahead and put the optical drive in because we're going to do a clean install of Windows 10 2004 edition. Get all the updates. Install a couple browsers. We'll be good to go. I'll go ahead and plug in my power cord. Clean install, it shouldn't take too long. It's not a real fast processor, but it's not too bad. So I'm going to put in my USB Windows 10 installation drive. I'll have a link down below where you can, I have a video on how to make one of these. It's free. Just download the media creation tool from Microsoft, stick it in a USB port. It should by default boot off of that, but sometimes you have to hit the, I believe, F9 to get the boot menu, but let's just turn it on and see. But we're going to do a, just Windows 10 Home. I just want to see if it'll default to the flash drive. Oh. I've had that before. Not too worried about that. Actually, let me. All right, guys. I went and I grabbed a different drive. I've been. Eh, I think I'm having some issues with that one flash drive. That's why the screen was all goofy. So let's try that again. I'm going to turn it back on, and by default, like I said, it should just boot right off this flash drive. But if not, I believe it's F9. You can hit to get the. Boot menu, so there's our Windows 10 set up. So I'll get the Windows 10 installation started and then I'll walk you through the quick setup to actually get into Windows so we can get all of our Windows updates. Make sure all our video drivers are up to date and things like that. We should be good to go. I'm going to walk you through this real quick. Worked on a ton of these camouflage laptops in the past, usually bad hard drives or broken screens. But it's going to run a lot better with an SSD as opposed to a clunky old hard drive. I just don't like hard drives anymore. Of course, I, I went with a, the MX500 from Crucial. It's a 250 gigabyte. That's all they need. You can get a 500, a one terabyte. This laptop will easily handle it. And we're going to do a custom. There's our SSD. Going to hit next. Let these files get copied over here, guys. And when it's almost done, I'll come back and wrap it up for you. Be right back. All right, guys, we got all the files copied over. We're just listening to Cortana here. I'm going to turn her down a little bit. And I'm going to walk you through the setup here real quick. Or as quick as I can. But it's still going to be a lot faster than what it was with the new SSD in there. Performance-wise, it's not a high-performance computer, but it's going to be much better. So I'm going to choose United States because that's where I'm at. And U.S. keyboard layout, skip additional layouts. Now to speed up the setup a little bit, I always choose on a clean install. I won't connect to the internet. I'm just going to click down where it says I don't have internet. And this will activate just fine. I'm going to continue with limited setup. You can change all this stuff later in settings. No password. 
you if you connect to the internet at this point, then Microsoft's going to force you to set up a Microsoft account or log in with your email address and all that fun stuff, and it's just kind of a pain in the butt. You can do all that later, though, if you want. I just need to get Windows installed, get all the updates, make sure all the drivers are good. Oop, I'm going to hit no. Not now. I don't care about Cortana right now. So I should be able to get what little bit of data the customer had on their hard drive here, just a few pictures and a couple of documents. Um, I'm going to install their Office 365 for them. And it's going to work much better than it did. So let's take a couple of minutes to get into Windows. The best thing you can do on any inexpensive laptop or even an old laptop that still works, if you want to use it or keep using it, is to replace the hard drive with a solid state drive. In this case, a SATA SSD. Fortunately, a lot of the new models that are available and coming out now have M.2 PCI Express slots for NVMe drives. In some cases, you can do both, uh, a SATA drive or a NVMe drive. <clears throat> but I think hard drives are going to be still around for a while. There's just no substitute for SSD. You don't, you don't ever need to worry about defragging your solid state. In fact, don't defrag or optimize your solid state drive. It's not necessary. Not good for the drive, actually. That's all old school stuff. Leave everything to us. So if you like my videos, give me a like. If you love my videos, give me a sub. I'd appreciate it. All right, guys, we're going to be here in just a second. I just want to make sure it comes up so you can see that it works. And we're not connected to the Internet yet, so it's going to be searching for drivers and things like that. But if I right-click on Start and go to File Explorer, Ooh, I meant this PC. Here's our new SSD. Of course, there's our optical drive. We should be good to go. So like I said, I'll get all the drivers and all the Windows updates, do a few, other, a few more little tweaks for the customer, and it'll be, it'll be good. So I appreciate you all watching. Uh, check out more of my videos. Have a great day.